Welcome to my shop. My name is Steve and normally when I do a video I don't show a whole lot of the lumber milling and preparation process but I've got some real winners in this one. I've got an S-shaped board, splits, crooks, bows, twists, you name it. I've got it. So I'm going to show you how I deal with this and fortunately in this next project I need a bunch of short pieces of wood and uh, let's see what I can do. Okay, and this board, it's got a very deep uh, crack that goes a good 18 inches in, so I know I'm going to lose that. I may be able to get this side. I've got a bunch of checking on the end. The opposite side, I've got a deep crack here, and it probably actually comes up to, to this area. I've got some waning there and on the opposite end as well. Let me see if I can stand this up on end and give you a, a flavor for the shape of this. This one just has a big, you know, line it up to the miter slot or parallel with it. I don't know whether you can see that or not. Now the other board I've got obviously has quite a few knots, but it's got a lot of chip out uh, uh, from the planing operation. So uh, the interesting thing about this board, and I don't know whether you can see, I don't know whether I can get back far enough. It's got twist and it's got an S shape, huge bows and crooks. And I don't know, I'm gonna just see if I can get the material I need out of this. If not, it's going to head to the burn pile. What I like to do is use a, a level, some type of straight edge. Uh, levels I like because they stand up by themselves. This one has a bow in it, and what I'm looking for here is just the flattest sections of this board. Find out where that bow starts. And I'm fairly flat here, and all I'm doing is just looking at the gap underneath the uh, level. And it looks like, and I'm trying to maximize my thickness, so it looks like I've got a bow that, that kind of, this is fairly flat here. Oh, wow, well, that's, that's flat. Maybe a slight dip in this area, very slight. And then it goes wonky at the other end, so let's see here, let's see how far I can get. I'm getting some twist here, maybe a little bit. So I'm thinking that's going to be it there. So I'm just going to mark this off. I don't know whether I'll be able to get anything useful out of there or not. Uh, this is a uh, Pika visor. Uh, it's kind of a crayon marker. They come in three different colors. Uh, this one's blue. I normally use white, but white doesn't show, show up very well on this light colored wood. Uh, it also comes in red. So this area right here, I may be able to gain, gain a piece here, but I'm just going to cross cut this, uh, the wonky ends off, and that should maximize my thickness at the uh, thickness planer. And now I'll get to the more difficult piece here. And this is the S-shaped one. Oh boy. Maybe I need to get a shorter level. I don't know. This is the one that has the twist, the bow, the crook. And uh, looks like on this one, kind of starts there. Let's see if I can. Get a little dip here. This one's horrible on this end. I can get a reasonably flat end up to here, so I'm going to mark this off. I, Now 
And I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut this off because, and see what I end up with on this end. So now I'm going to take these pieces and head, the, head over to the bandsaw and rip them, split them in half, approximately. Uh, feed direction, I'm only going to joint one face flat for pieces with uh, twist and this actually has a bit of twist in it. What I like to do is find the, the side with the least amount of twist and that appears to be that side and I'll look to, to joint this to where the, uh, the grain is going downhill so I need to flip that one that way. This one has a bit of a twist too. And it's a little less that way. And the grain direction's correct. So, so what I'm going to be doing is pressing lightly down on the table, feeding, and then sliding my hand over the bridge guard. Keep your hand away from the trailing edge, particularly on these shorter pieces. And then as you transition, you can put the downward pressure there, but be careful. Do not deform your workpiece because if you still have a bow after taking a light pass, you can make this flat and deflect the board on the other end and, and just make your, uh, your joining effort go wild. <laughs> Describe this is I went to the house and got a banana and basically what I had I was trying to join a board here and you can't get good reference surfaces but if you do your your board like this uh, you'll at least have two points that that will provide a reference surface for your uh, for your board and that's in essence what I did Put that aside for later. Is it, what I like to do is not only look at the board and feel it, but put it out on the outfeed table and try to rock. And if you get any rock, you know you still got some twist, even though you, you, you may be smooth. So that, you need to look for technique there. Let me get one of these longer pieces and see what I've got. Reasonably 
flat. Actually, that's reasonably flat as well. This one has a bow to it. So now I've got my material face jointed. Some of these, there's just shallow areas where it's not been jointed. Uh, that won't give the planer a problem uh, unless it's all the way off on one edge. This one's close, but I'll see what I end up with. It's close to being flat on this edge because it does not rock and it's got no visible gaps. So now I'm going to, I've chosen the thinnest board and the thinnest that I've got is 18.25 uh, millimeters, which is kind of what I was expecting. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and convert the joiner planer to planing mode. And I'm going to show you how to do this. First thing I need to do is flip the upper guard out of the way. I need to loosen my fence and pull it all the way toward me until it locks in position. I'll unlatch the tables, pull out on this handle and lift it up. And then I'll flip the chip guard over. And because of the way my my hose is oriented. I've got this bungee cord here and I'll just lift that out of the way. And now uh, the only thing I have left to do is position the table to the thickness I want and I'll do that by just holding this. So I'm going to go for I think I'm just going to go for 18 millimeters. And I'm at 18, and I'll verify that. I need to, uh, since I'm dealing, I think this is maple, at least the grain structure looks like maple, not birch. And I'm going to flip this. This is a two speed planer. It'll either do seven meters per minute or 14 meters per minute. So I'm going to convert that to seven. I have no idea what that is in feet per second. So now my transmission's engaged, so that just engaged the feed rollers.
Okay, so to convert back to joiner, in order to get this table down, I need to lower the uh, planer bed down to four inches or 100 millimeters. I can flip that. Disengage the feed rollers. Lower the tables. Latch these tables down. If you don't latch these tables down, the uh, you'll find out very quickly. Don't ask me how. No, uh, because when you feed through the joiner, the outside lip will catch on the uh, edge of the outfeed table. And I'll just pull this pin, and I probably need to lubricate that rod because it's getting a little hard to push. And then I'll flip the uh, joiner guard back over. Okay, so that's how I mill up lumber uh, on the joiner planer combo. Uh, because these boards were so twisted and obviously had a lot of internal stress in them, either from the drying process or from just the tree growth. I'm going to leave these sit on my workbench overnight on the edge and uh, let them acclimate and I'll check them again tomorrow to make sure that they are still flat. And uh, right now they're, they're pretty flat. I'm hoping they stay that way. If not, it's off to the kindling pile. So anyway, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.